Hi, you're watching Flight Steinberg's YouTube channel. And today, turning a monophonic synth into a polyphonic synth, uh, at least three note polyphonic synth, using the Strum Big Sky once again. Yeah, nice reverb pedals, already some years old, but uh, it's still the best, I think. And this one has got a very nice shimmer reverb, and we're going to utilize that. And perhaps you've already seen um, there are MIDI ports in the back of this thing, and I wondered what these uh, things can actually do. And today I'm going to answer that uh, using web MIDI, a little bit of programming, and some external hardware. Yeah, this is maybe going to be fun. <laughs> so please join me. But first, let's record a long sustained note so you can hear what the shimmer reverb sounds like if you haven't heard one before. Yeah, and in comes the shimmer reverb. Shimmer reverb is a reverb algorithm which uh, makes two copies of the sound you're playing in real time and then pitch shifts them. One goes up and one goes down uh, for an octave or some semi notes. And um, yeah, this algorithm on the big sky is very high quality. Um, it's almost exactly like the thing you're playing on the guitar or the keyboard. So here's a demonstration how that sounds. The original signal is a slightly filtered saw wave playing a C3 note. The two middle encoders in the bottom row will adjust the frequency of the lower and upper harmonics in half tone steps. Normally you'd use this effect with subtlety, but we're not here for that. Let's turn this up until the effect is as loud as the original signal. Technically speaking, you could play chords using the encoders only. Now, while this is all well and good, it's not really practicable. What if we could use a keyboard to play the pitch shifted notes? Let's take a look at the Big Sky manual if there's any information on what the MIDI implementation can do for us. And there it is, on page 23. It says that the continuous control number 25 and 26 will control the amount of pitch shifting. There are 28 steps available, and it's safe to assume that one step corresponds to a semitone. Knowing this, we can now build a setup. First, connect your MIDI keyboard to your computer. Connect your computer's MIDI out to your synthesizer's MIDI in. Then, connect your synthesizer's MIDI through, or if it doesn't have one, it's MIDI out to the big sky's MIDI in. Now, Connect your synth's audio out to the Big Sky's audio in and the Big Sky's audio out to your audio interface's audio in. Also, set up your synth to receive MIDI signals only on channel 1. If you're not sure how to do that, look at your synthesizer's manual. With that out of the way, now let's do some JavaScript programming using the Web MIDI protocol, which is available in all modern browsers. Well, uh, you don't actually need to do this because I posted a web page for you to use, but let me explain how this works, okay? Here's the web application I created. You just need to open this in your browser. The link is in this video's description. Select your MIDI input device here, in my case the nano key, and your synthesizer here. Just leave the MIDI channels as they are. For this example, I'll use the EX5's Virtual Acoustic Engine, which is monophonic. That means you can only play one note at a time. Now imagine you play a C major chord. Our synth is monophonic, 
and we have a high quality real-time pitch shifter, which can pitch the note we play upwards and downwards. We will achieve the best sound quality if we play the middle note on the synth and shift that note slightly downwards to play the prime and slightly up to play the perfect fifth. In other words, the synth will play the E and the big sky will add the C and the G. In order to achieve this, you need to know that in MIDI, all the notes are numbered, beginning at a zero for C null. So the C4 is the number 48 and E4 is 52 and G4 is 55. Now, the Strymon CC numbers don't refer absolute values or notes, but are relative to the note you played. In other words, whatever note you play, the lower pitch shift will always be one octave lower if the CC number you chose is zero. So to get our keyboard play notes on the big sky, we must convert the absolute MIDI numbers to relative numbers for the CC data. This is quite easy. All we need to do is some subtraction and addition. For example, in our C major chord, the middle E is the number 52, the G is the number 55. So the difference between those notes is 55 minus 52, which is 3. And now we need to add half of the number of the available pitches on the big sky, which is 28 divided by 2, and that is 14. So the correct value for the G is 3 plus 14, which is 17. After I figured this out, I just needed to solve another slight problem. When you play a chord, the order in which you play the three notes might not always be the same. This is a problem, because my program tries to figure out the second note of the chord, so the big sky's added notes would be different depending on if you play C, E, G or G, C, E. In order to fix that, I built an array of the notes which are being played and sort them in a sounding order before they get sent to the synth and the paddle. By doing this, we assure the second note is always the middle one. Yeah, and that's it. This works really well. And finding the small solution to such minor logical puzzles is really fun. Here's an example using the x VL tone you heard earlier. <laughs> pleased with the outcome that sounds quite good uh, don't you think and um, yeah so I learned a lot about uh, MIDI implementation and effect algorithms and I think um, this pedal still really rocks all these years later and um, yeah if you found this interesting um, please consider subscribing to my channel I have lots and lots of other synth related videos on there and as always thanks for watching and see you next week bye bye